All right, looks like I'm on air here. Good evening, everybody. Um, this is a Free Fiddle Lessons live hangout session um, where we I play some tunes. Uh, people might type me some questions, and I'll try to answer those as best as I can. I'm going to try to move this little ray of light out of my face face. Hmm. Maybe I'll scoot this way, <laughs> then it can go over my shoulder harmlessly. Um, I um, am broadcasting this evening from the cool of my basement. It is surprisingly here at the end of May. It was like 97 degrees, I think, when I went out earlier today, which is really hot for me in kind of any time of year and really unexpected at the end of May. So. I'm loving the cool of the basement. I may at some point get cold and put on my sweatshirt, but right now it feels really good. I finished my last lesson in GDGD -GD tuning. Um, and I thought I would start out this evening just playing a tune in this tuning. I just learned a new one, but I'm not quite good enough to send it out to the internet quite yet. Um, a tune I'm really excited about called, I think, Over the Mountain. Um, but this one is um, a tune that mm, can't seem to find a name for. Um, I learned it from the playing of the great Quebec fiddler, Eric Favreau. And he got it from a tape of, I think, his uncle's playing. And he believes that it's an original tune um, by one of his uncles. So this tune um, is associated with Eric Favreau's uh, family, uh, the great musical family from Quebec. <laughs> Thank you. 
So there is, oh right, I started putting things in the comments. Um, so I'll do that. Looks like somebody's here. Um, unknown name of tune. And I figured out how I can see the chat window or bring it up behind. <laughs> Hi, Donna. I'm glad the chickens are safe. <laughs> That's a great first comment. I like, I like that opening. Uh, if I can just make my mouse work, I'll be in great shape. Come on. I was, this is going to be the time I didn't have, oh, I'm, I'm touching in the wrong place. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, I'm not going to have technical difficulties tonight. I'm determined. Um, so first tune is uh, unknown name um, from um, uh, Eric Favreau's uncle. There we go. So, Donna, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them up. Um, I'm going to start by coming out of cross G. I don't think there's, I don't think there's anything else I want to play in G, D, G, D tuning. Meet Cricket. This is Cricket, my cat. There's another cat. She's black. Uh, her name's Willow. Sometimes we call her Mama. I thought about calling her uh, uh, a different kind of tree that I can't remember. Hazel. And some of my friends still call her that because they like that name better. But she made a, a little visit in one of the other videos, which one of my regular uh, private students was very excited about because she's very shy and she won't come out for anybody really but me. Uh, and actually, no, she likes my friend Mia pretty well. Uh, but so she made a little cameo and uh, one of my private students said, I saw her, I finally saw her. Yeah, he's a boy too. Cricket um, is. Okay, I'm almost, uh, almost in tune here. Maybe I've introduced that in a previous video. There's the Velocipede sound system. Oh, yes, yeah, very nice. <laughs> Just so you get the full picture of all the things in my basement and what they are. Um, so I think um, until somebody throws some other kind of question at me, um, I had so much fun playing that last tune. I think I kind of might play a, a little stretch of, of Quebec tunes because um, I don't know that I've done that, and I love them. Um, most of the tunes that I know... Um, I've learned from the repertoire and the playing of Guy Bouchard, another great fiddler from, um, he's from Quebec City. And I've gotten to know him over the years. Um, he used to come regularly to main fiddle camp and now it doesn't come so regularly, but um, he's a very, very generous person and um, got to go and spend some time up um, at his place in Quebec on a couple of different occasions um, and definitely owe them another visit. So. Um, he and his wife, Laura, are, are really wonderful people and um, wonderful musicians. And uh, he's also a great trout fisherman. Um, so I got to go up one summer and do a little um, uh, watch, watch his uh, mastery of, of trout fishing in addition to the fiddle. So... Um, he and the group he put together recorded this marvelous CD called um, Air Tordu, meaning Crooked Tunes. Um, and um, the first tune on that album is one that I have been teaching to a bunch of my students recently. It's called Real Isodon, I-S-S-O-D-U. And look at me, I'm going to put it up here before I even play it. There it is. Um, it's in the key of A, and it's um, it's just 
the best opening to an album. I just love it.
Um, sorry, just distracted a little bit by the door opening upstairs. So that uh, second tune is called Real uh, Robin, Robin's Real. Uh, I might have played that on one of these before. I like that tune a lot, and it comes out sometimes. It's from the repertoire, um, or from the it's, it's a composition of um, Claude Mitte, another great Quebec fiddler. Real uh, Robin um, by Claude. Oh, I think it's with an E. Sorry, Claude, if I'm misspelling your name. No, I believe it's with an E. I think I'm doing it right. All right, what should be up next? Um, um, maybe something with that. I guess we talked a lot about that um, Quebec double up bow thing. Are you guys going to the park? Are you guys going to the park? Okay. Uh, excuse me, children. Um, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I talked a lot about the double up bow from Quebec um, with the um, Saint Antoine, real Saint Antoine. Um, that. Of course, I, that I did it incorrectly that time because I was thinking about it. little gap. Um, I've also been putting that in another tune. Is it this one? Let's find out. Uh, there's two other tunes that I've been teaching. Yeah, I think it's this one. This is um, another unknown tune, um, which is, um, I also learned from the repertoire of Guy Bouchard in a video he posted on Facebook. Um, uh, repertoire. Of Guy Bouchard. I call it Guy's, Guy Bouchard's warming up tune because in French, in the thing of the, the um, text that went with the video, he said, here we are warming up. And it was this great tune. I was like, oh, I want to learn that. So I did. And I wish there was a name. Um, but I've asked Guy and he doesn't really have a name for it either. So I've done uh, all I can do on that for the moment. <laughs> Thank you. 
there's that tune. I also, I was just noticing that my icon next to my typing uh, is a crown. I feel very honored. <laughs> um, so uh, the next tune I want to play, which might have that Bowie. Oh, I was going to demonstrate that Bowie. Right. Um, it comes in the B part of this tune. And you can just play back and forth bows and add a note. Um, and that's fine too. So that's what that was in like. But instead, the kind of very Quebec sounding bow thing to do is to play down, up, up, down. With this little gap in between. I mean a rest, that is what that's usually called. I would say that it's a little harder to do in this tune than in real Saint Antoine, because in Saint Antoine you're just staying on the same note with the... Oh, I'm lying. <laughs> you're not, you're changing notes there and changing strings. Oh no, you're on the same string anyways. You're going from A to E. But um, this is a little trickier, I think, because you're changing strings. Uh, the, I guess it's simpler in a way, too, because you are um, get to leave your finger down on the string. You can leave it on C sharp. Uh, and play the E string. And so you don't actually have to be moving your left hand. That's something. Um, but then I was thinking of this other tune, um, but I can't... I don't know that it has that particular bowing. Um, and, uh-oh, am I going to forget? Oh, yes, I remember what it's called. Real des Ancestres, the Ancestors Real. I can find all my fancy French ancestors. Uh, uh, Accenting. Oops, except I'm missing a letter. Um, that's I also got from Guy Bouchard, but then finally found the name. We just called it the Jimmy Cracked Corn Tune, my bandmate Baron and I, for a long time because it reminded us of the American folk song Jimmy Cracked Corn, but I don't care. Um, in this one little section. Um, but then I was listening to a Lisa Ornstein recording, and um, I was like, wait, that's a Jimmy Crack Corn tune! And there it is. Uh, it's called Real Des Um uh, So I don't think this has the double up bow. I can't remember at the moment, but it does have some other neat little bowing things that I think um, are worth, worth looking at, and not super hard. Um, <laughs>
So the bowing that I've been really noticing there recently is um, in that very first phrase. You know, this up bow where you really need to cover some ground. Because the first bow is pretty short. And so you don't need to it so much there. But you get this long note and then a short note and another down. And then you're like all the way here in your bow and you've got to make up some distance. So whenever I have that scenario, which is actually, I think it's even more common in, in jigs um, and where I've talked about, um, in jigs I've talked about doing an, a double up bow kind of to get keep your bowing in the right direction, which also helps you recover bow. Um, but um, I find in jigs where there's a lot of coordinates in the eighth note, the like, <laughs> That kind of um, that kind of jig rhythm. That I have to do the same thing. And what I do in these situations is I have my long bow, and then I do a short bow, and I lift for the rest. So it's hard to see. I'll put it up against my face so you can see. Yeah, there we go. As I get going faster, you can see I'm not actually lifting a whole ton, just a very small amount, and that helps you avoid bouncing when you come down. The other thing that helps with bouncing is if you come closer to the frog, the closer to the frog you set the bow down, the more control you have to keep that. Further out, it's easier to bounce the bow. Uh, so let's see if I can do... hard for you to see the amount that I'm lifting my bow and have my hand not be in the way but you can get the gist of the idea that I'm not lifting it very much just maybe a I would say like a half an inch at most well, actually maybe I'm lifting it more sometimes maybe a full inch I'm doing the same sort of thing there just for that it also has this like lifting feeling um when you lift the bow you you get this lightness um so those notes are the same length i can just play them on the string but if i play the up bows with lift it it just um makes the tune sound so much better i think as opposed to wrong with that exact like some of the time that would be fine but but a little more air just gives it more energy same thing there you got all these long notes combined with Oh, maybe they aren't actually that much longer than I'm, they might be more even, but I'm definitely playing long, short lift, long, short lift, long, short lift for the bowing. Yeah. another fun thing to do and I like that effect in a lot of tunes um, sometimes it's more of that on the string off the string on the string off the string um, let's think of another example um, no um, yeah sometimes I think the, the other thing that I will do is have the um, have just more percussion and accenting altogether. Um, and then maybe do things like 
where I'm off the string after each stroke. You're doing the same bowing throughout the entire song. Bowing can be confusing for beginners. I'm totally with you, Donna. Um, uh, and I think one of the most confusing things about it is that people aren't consistent about what they do. There are patterns that people use a lot. Um, the thing is that what bowing does is it changes the sound, the like rhythmic sound of the notes. So um, it can make, um, obviously you can play very smooth and connected, you can play staccato, and that's just with how you're using the bow. But you can also, this you know pattern of um, slurring affects things a, a lot um, also, which is sort of like a whole other can of worms. Um, a lot of the time in these Quebec tunes, I'm mostly using slurring, hi, Kat, using slurring every now and again um, to get, basically to keep the bow rhythm that I want of having the downstrokes where I want them, which is usually on the beat here. <laughs> You can do the whole that whole A part just in single bows back and forth. Um, the one place that I'm sometimes putting slurs, or at least <laughs> that I did in that time through just now, um, so it's down up down 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 up down up down. So one slur of three notes. I tend to do a lot of three note slurs like if i'm doing a slur in a reel for the effect of the sound as opposed to to get my bow in the right place because there i could just bow back and forth you don't need a slur but um to to maintain a bowing emphasis on the down bow that makes sense um but um i actually usually will slur three three notes up three eighth notes up in this case i was slurring them down um, which I do less frequently, um, but often, you know, and I guess it's partly because if you you kind of tend to slur, I've never articulated this before, this will be helpful <laughs> if I ever tell you instead of just interrupting myself. Um, sorry. So often when we're slurring just to get our bow going in the other direction, we're slurring two notes because, um, in a pattern um, in, I should think about this for jigs and make sure it's also true for jigs. Um, I think it maybe is also true for jigs. Um, if you're going in a reel, um, let me use this little passage as an example, I guess. Actually, let me use Reel de Montreal uh, because it's got that scale. Um, so in Real Montreal, I put a slur on the second and third notes. And that's... When I'm doing that, I'm doing that to get the down bow on the D, which is the beat. So I'm using it for the purpose of changing my direction. If I just went back and forth... Then I end up with up bows on the on the beats, which you can accent, but it's a little more tricky. So there I was accenting on the up bows. Um, it also balances out space-wise the bowing, um, the the big down bow, and then I have these short little bows. But if I wanted to. Um, a, a place that I'm accenting or that I'm slurring rather for the purpose of changing the sound of the notes, I'm going to tend to slur three notes. Um, unless there's also a reason that I would need to change my bow direction. Um, but basically in a reel, if you've got eight notes in the reel and you want your accent in uh, eight notes in a measure and you, you generally are wanting your 
oftentimes wanting your emphasis, um, which you usually accomplish with the down bow, to fall in the same places in each measure. And so going back and forth gives you this nice pattern that makes sense. Up, uh, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, or in this tune. Uh, Uh, sorry, that makes it more confusing. Um, so it's, this is also true when you have two quarter notes and four eighths notes. Anything where you have an even number of notes in your measure, um, it will work out and kind of keep your bow in, it, in the same spot in each measure if you're going back and forth. And so if I was to do a slur of two of those notes, for example, the first two, then I've got an up bow on my next beat. So it's kind of thrown me off. And then I'm ending, I also would have an up bow for my next beat in the next measure afterwards. So if I'll do that again with a slur that I wouldn't normally do. So slur, and then up, down, down, and then I've got an up that I have to try and make strong yet, so I'm just kind of stuck in this trying to make up as strong possible, cool sound, actually, but harder. So I tend to let gravity do the work for me and use an accented up bow as a special effect. Um, so usually when I have an even number of notes in the measure, um, if I'm going to add a slur for fun, I'm going to make it a three note slur because then I will end up with my bow back where it would be if I was just going back and forth. So this is what I actually did when I was playing that time. Down, up, down, 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 up. And that gives me the next nice down bow for my, my next measure. Um, I could also go down, up, down, up, up, up. I might do that sometimes. That kind of changes the accent thing. So instead of ba 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 ba, uh, sorry, ba 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 ba, ba, ba I get ba 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 ba. ba which is a little more syncopated. Ba, 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 instead of ba, ba, ba. <clears throat> this is hard to do. Ba, 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 ba. Um, but to, I'm realizing all of a sudden that I'm not actually totally answering your question, Donna, though hopefully what I've been saying is I think is applicable. But am I doing the same bowing throughout the entire song? Um, in A part, like I said, mostly doing um, doing back and forth bowing. But that um, that lift that I had been talking about, I'm mostly doing um, at least in the in the A por A portion of the song. I'm mostly doing it right at the beginning. <laughs> notes I am tending to play more on the string. And then I did so often the long notes um, I'm lifting as well. Let's see about the B part and I'll talk about both slurs and that lift concept. Um, so there's a pickup note to the B part. I also a note often do up bow for pickup notes. Um, sometimes if there's two, I'll do down, up. Um, sometimes if there's two, I'll do up, up, depending on where I've ended um, my bow previously. Sometimes I'll add notes just to get my bow going direction I want it to be going. Um, ah, there's one. <laughs> Yeah, that same
same ending, doing a lot of the same bowing there. And I am, I do notice I'm doing a lot of this lifting throughout. There. There. accomplished the B part just with back and forth bowing. Let me double check it because the first time I definitely was putting in some slurs. Yeah, so you can definitely just do um, the back and forth bowing works well in this tune. I was doing... same down 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 up which I really don't think I do very often maybe I do it more in Quebec tunes down 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 up that would be another option for those long notes rather than I think I like that better than playing them plain on the string but remember before I was saying I was doing the down lift down lift and I like that um, and I think I also like slurring those notes in Paris better than just playing them plain on the string. Sounds a little less interesting to me. You can almost get some of that same lifting feeling in the slur. I guess I'm also pushing I'm doing this. Um, I think I've talked about the pulse bow in the past. Where you um, press a little harder and move a little faster in the middle of the stroke to give a swell to the sound. But it's, I guess typically when I think of swell, I think of it continuing to grow. And this is a brief, a brief swell. It's like a, a, a what would you call it at C? Um, a, uh, I don't know. I'm just making things up. So I'm pressing and then kind of releasing back to the normal amount of pressure right right off. And if you do that, if you time that right with the placement of your finger of the next note in the slur, it pushes that second note a little bit. totally different bowing. So, I mean, this is the thing. I think my bowing, my bowing advice is conflicted. Part of me says, don't worry about it and it'll just like even itself all out. Part of me says, do worry about it, like try to get, um, really, I think my core advice is to try to make the notes Figure out what notes you hear in your head is strong or listen to a recording and, and hear what notes are being played strongly and try to make those notes strong in your own playing. They'll often end up using a down bow. Um, in jigs, you often do have to use an up bow also, like I talked about in the jig bowing video and um, on these evening chats before. Um, with some of my find that learning specific bowing patterns can be helpful, but it's so hard to execute in a tune for a lot of people that sometimes it works better to kind of learn the pattern and then forget about it and, and try to listen to the sounds that the instrument is making um, and, and mimic that sound. Um, I see a lot of my young students will at some point just start hearing the bowing as part of the tune without me doing a lot of talking about it and they start using bowing patterns that make more sense um, just sort of spontaneously um, and like I said without a lot of talking about it without you know occasionally I'll, I'll point out what a thing you could do with the bow that I think is particularly helpful um, or is very characteristic for a, um, a style but um, 
and I haven't seen that happen as much with my adult students and I don't I don't know that it can't happen but I don't know for sh you know totally for sure that it can happen as easily either um, it could be you know brains are different between kids and adults as we all know um, and it could be that in some way the kids ears are better at picking up the the musical language of the slurs and the effect that that has on the sound and the accenting. Um, but it also could be just a, a factor of, um, of other things and that none of my, and that my adult students who didn't have background as kids just like haven't gotten to that place where they're ready to do it yet. Because it does, it takes a while. It's a bunch of years of playing and, um, you know, I think it's only, um, it's only my my young students who've spent the most time that have gotten to that place so far. Um, so I wouldn't, I'm not without hope um, for for adults to be able to just sort of intuit Boeing eventually as well. Um, but I think definitely whether you're trying to intuit it or whether you're trying to mimic and copy, I think it can be really helpful for people to focus on the sound and listen for the sound that um, of what's strong, what's weaker, what's connected, what's dis disconnected or disjointed, um, because that's all the things that Boeing accomplishes. Um, and people make lots of different choices, and that's a way that you can play the fiddle tune like 10 times, and you're not sick of it because it's actually changing. Um, it sounds to everybody else like you're just playing the same tune exactly the same like a bunch of different times a lot of the time but as a player even if I think it sometimes is even unconscious um, sometimes it's conscious but sometimes it's also unconscious that you're just doing slightly different things for me it, it's like the tune is a, a river rather than a narrow channel the tune is sort of a river and there's lots of different you can kind of float back and forth across the river and you're still playing the tune as long as you're going with the flow that that there's um you can kind of reach out and grab different variations whether it's notes or bowing or or ornamentation and um that keeps it kind of fresh and new each time you're playing it and each time you're playing that tune again and again and again and again and again um I think that can be hard to pick up on at first as a beginner and, it can, and it's really hard to accomplish because a lot of the time even, you know, um, I think it's often only the most experienced teachers who have necessarily spent the time thinking about what they're doing specifically when they make those variations um, in a way that they can talk about it with students um, because so much of that process is actually s more unconscious than conscious. Um, boy, I really got on a, a little bit of a tangent. Um, I can't remember where I started with all that, um, except we were talking about Boeing for that tune. So um, I guess, yeah, I start, that's what happened is I started doing a Boeing that was totally different from what I did. I said, yeah, I do this or I do this, and then suddenly I was doing another thing. So I think um, focusing on the sound sort of leaves room for that to happen a little bit more. And the other advice that I sometimes encourage people to try is that a lot of my kids get to this, when they get to the point of just having interesting, good bowing unconsciously, they've first gone through a period where they just kind of bowed wildly and they were trying to, um, trying to go you know, just you know, so trying to play fast and changing the bow direction just whenever they run out of bow. Um, and somehow over time that seems to even out into something that is great bowing. <laughs> and I don't really, it's a very mysterious process to me. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, good. Good. Um, I don't know if I have a whole lot more to say on the tangent, um, but I'm glad it's helpful. <laughs> Maybe I should play that tune just as a as another um, 
look at what I might do in some bowing. I also think um, I've been noticing that I do a lot more back and forth bowing, I think even than I used to. And I think I'm making the, my playing sound more and more like what I want to hear, or maybe what I want to hear is changing. But that for a long time I was slurring partly out of necessity to like go fast enough. And now I'm getting to the point where I can go, can play fast um, and with the kind of tone and sound that I want um, and do single bows for, um, for a bunch of tunes. So I think like, um, this has a lot of string crossing, so I bet I would have done more single bows anyways, but. <laughs> And it's not a great example because I do actually put a lot of slurs into it. Um, but I, I know that I used to slur more, I think, in certain tunes, especially kind of New England sounding tunes um, or jigs. And that now I like that single sound, single bowing sound better often. Um, it could be also that I'm doing more interesting things with my single bows than I used to. And so now I like the sound and before I didn't. But I, I think feel free to just experiment, I guess, is the message that I'm trying to send. And don't feel like just because somebody says, oh, in Irish music, we use this bowing, you know, all the time, or in whatever, you know, take those as suggestions, but not as commands. Um, and listen and try stuff and listen to what it sounds like if you do it differently. Um, and see if you can make the loud notes where you want them. And Gradually, I think you'll, or start by just trying to get the loud notes on the beat is a good, that make, gives you practice making some of the notes loud. And then as you go on, your brain will kind of give you more complex suggestions of places that you could put um, emphasis that would be maybe more interesting. But I'll play a little bit of, um, what is this tune? Um, the classic, uh, sometimes played in B flat. Um, all I can think is that it's something Fisher's hornpipe. I was like, it's something to do with fishing <laughs> with the ocean. <laughs> this is how I categorize tunes, it's like thematically, which is sometimes actually helpful, but sometimes not. So a little Fisher's hornpipe. Actually played all, actually as a hornpipe first.
bedtime for Julia. She can't play the tunes anymore. Thank you, Donna, for being here. And thank you all those folks who are watching afterwards. I hope you find some things that are useful. Check out the website. You might find some more useful things there. I'm trying to get new content up there periodically. Um, visit my Patreon page if you want to check things out there and support um, free for the lessons going out into the world because I would love to keep making it happen. Um, and I intend to keep making it happen whether you visit my page or not. <laughs> um, but the support certainly helps me devote more time to it um, in all the complexities of, of life here in Maine. But I um, hope everybody has a good night. I hope to see you, some of you at Fiddle Camp and uh, around soon this summer. And um, I have dates for the next, um, the next session. I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. I think I'm switching to earlier in the month. So it's like June, like sixth or seventh or eighth maybe um something that um that i think that first full week of june because then i'm away at fiddle camp and i'm away a bunch in uh both july and august so i'm trying to get the dates out and do them earlier in the month um because the ends of the months are full but have a great night everybody and i'll put uh let's see i should add fisher's hornpipe and everybody have a great night